wanted to do something with my music. We discussed learning to play the keyboards, but when you questioned where I'd find community in that, that stopped me short, because at the time I didn't understand what community had to do with learning the keyboard either. And when I began to reflect on times in the distant past, when I was most creative musically, it was way back in my early grad days, when I would hang out with a fellow guitar player and we'd just share our stuff for a couple hours in the back room after church. So I thought that I would approach the guy who leads worship at my church and see if we could put together an impromptu group in order to feel the creativity and see what would come of this. At least that was the plan. I was approached by the worship leader Keith several months ago after a mutual friend had shared with him that I'd been playing music at their small group. Keith invited me to work with him when I felt ready. Funny thing is, is that when I decided to help out, they didn't need me for guitar and we never did experiment with keyboards but they wanted me to help them work the sound booth at the back of the church. So that's what I ended up first learning to do, running a 30-channel soundboard in a live situation. No room for studio tricks or do-overs. It's been a real adventure. Basically, I sat in the sound booth, running PowerPoint for the songs during the service, and watching the veterans handle the endless problems. They eventually let me tweak a few knobs. It's funny, personality-wise, because the first two sound guys to train me were pretty much authoritative about their opinions on things. Well, pretty much everything, whether it had anything to do with sound or not. Anyway, that approach did help me figure out how to break things down so that I wouldn't get overwhelmed by all the possible problems that would come up. Then one day, the first sound guy announced that he and his wife were leaving. And then the next guy stepped down. And I found myself alternating weeks with the other greenhorn, Bethany, who had been training for several months versus my several weeks. Fortunately, I learned very quickly. Joe? Si. You, we don't know what we do without you, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, drink my chai. Here's how a typical Sunday would go. Keith and I would show up at around 7 a.m. I'd have to get up well before 6 o'clock to make it from uh, Long Beach to Costa Mesa. We'd spend the first 40 minutes or so setting up all the cables and mics and monitors. Then once the musicians arrived, usually around 7.45, I would have them play their instruments or sing into their mics and set the, their levels or the volume they were coming into the soundboard with. Then I would set how loudly they'd hear themselves in the monitors or speakers that they had with them on stage. Then the other persons on stage would say whether they needed to hear the instrument or person in their own monitors. Everyone had to have their level checked, monitor checked, and the other monitors checked, and then I'd move on to the next instrument or person. I'd usually start with whoever was ready first, uh, acoustic guitar, piano, or bass, and then the voices, and lastly the drums, because basically once you set the drums, no one could have a conversation. Then I'd set the band free to practice whatever they were going to practice. When they were playing is when I would set the sound levels for the room itself. The trick was that it was usually much louder when the room was empty than when the church would fill up, and I had to take into that into account. And also, things usually didn't sound the same in the sanctuary as it did in the sound booth. So once I felt like the sound was set, I'd usually walk around the room to sample the differences in different parts of the room. Now during the service, while I was not as apt to really play around with the levels during the set, I learned how to push different parts of the performance as the songs were being, being played, and I wanted to hear more piano or lead guitar, for example.
Bethany and I rotated our weeks on duty. One week she'd be on the board and I'd do PowerPoint, and then the next week we'd switch and I'd run the board and she'd do PowerPoint. Then one day, one of the previous sound guys rejoined us, and that meant that instead of alternating between the soundboard and PowerPoint, I could join the band and play guitar. And as much as I've been playing guitar off and on for two-thirds of my existence, I've never really played with a band, and having been away from this music for so long, every Sunday that I played, I played the song for the first time in the rehearsal just before the service. Again, it was a new adventure. Technical Aptitude and Personality Management I've had pretty good success with this learning process because I do learn pretty quickly and generally make fast connections between these new experiences and previous learning. I pretty much self-scaffold my way to being comfortable doing a job that eight weeks ago very much intimidated me. The other thing that I noticed was that previously the sound guys did their job but pretty much stayed in the back and didn't really seem to participate in certain things like the pre-service prayer in the front. I decided that I needed as much of that prayer and the team building as the folks in front. So whether I was playing guitar, twiddling the soundboard faders, or running PowerPoint, I generally made sure to be a part of the huddle in the front. I also noticed that the previous sound guys, owing to their expertise with running sound, were not always, not, were not always the most friendly or happy people to work with. I decided that if my role here was to share my God-given talent, and to learn new stuff pretty much every session, then I was going to have fun doing it. And I think even though the pressure can uh, build sometimes, like when the drummer doesn't show up until 9 o'clock for a service that begins at 9.30, I did try to maintain a pretty loose and flexible work or learning environment. Now when I've been on sound duty or PowerPoint, I've received appropriate thanks for my efforts. Then last Sunday, playing electric guitar for the whole service and gradually getting used to hearing myself, generally because acoustic guitar tends to not be as much out in front, I got the best praise so far when Keith told me that he thought that I was getting a hang of it. That felt pretty good. You want to do that? Well, we I do. don't know because Dale... We have to remember. <laughs> you know, Joe, you know what he told me? He is so weird. Um, I'll have to tell you later. I can't remember. That guy, he's yeah. just, yeah. He's always weird. Okay, who did this one? I don't know. Jeez. I think the courts have a mind of their own sometimes. And when I began to reflect on the times in the distant past when I was most productive, create. <laughs> These are going to be great outtakes. Watch the same clip over and over again until I get it right.